Agini Kor, Erin Gedal, she has this main lump, weak as a goal, a Mahan Hain, Nugas, a son, Maven Kayla Saivi, Nasak, and Kirichiak, the Slart, then Krinutovok, the Shak, Krinuta Froge, Akas Shivshe, Kilura Shas, Kibliam, is Tamaharve Kumalishin, Dodona Las Sakton, Nefaklu Usaches, and Sun Focha Darisharon. It's a very great pleasure to be here. And I first of all uh, thank um, Daniel for his warm uh, welcome. Uh, there is no greater compliment a person can get than to think that what I said during the heady days of that campaign, that some of the words lasted and, uh, and, and, were, and were appreciated. I also want to thank um, the Council of Faroga and its National Director for the invitation to be here at this very important 60th anniversary occasion. And I want to thank all of you for, in any way, for those times I have visited Faroga uh, in the past. I think that uh, Faroga has come uh, such a long way. On the 14th of March, 1953, I Yes, it was, uh, I think, that 14th of March, 1952, uh, Mokra is, is, uh, is, uh, is founded. And Mokra Natuha's thinking in the 1950s was wonderful because it realised that while there are between, while there are people leaving the country in the 50s, between 1955 and 1960, a quarter of a million people left Ireland. But another stream was happening that was sometimes being ignored, and I say this as a sociologist of my other life, and that was the movement from rural areas into towns and the developments that were taking place in the suburbs. And that was very quickly recognized by Makra Natuha, who saw that they should be interested in people who were moving from country, from farm to suburb to towns and so forth. And those early clubs came about, serving needs that weren't simply just one kind or another, narrowly rural or narrowly urban, but also dealing with all of the problems of young people in tr the throes of incredible change. And it has grown today to having 530 clubs spread. It then in its transition, when it became Foroiga, it is now 530 clubs involving somewhere between 56 and 57,000 people. I think that this is a, an extraordinary achievement. Trace Liam liver father, agus haka hora hei yad sanata gobar gujonach, shaktan in eich shaktan bleeg in eich bleem. Those people, as I have said, who work week after week, year after year, are doing such an important, important, important task. I'm glad that Daniel referred as well, you know, to those questions, those seminars, those interviews we had as candidates during the presidential election about what it is, how we saw Ireland developing in the future. I have said, I think there was some merit to holding to a kind of manifesto about an inclusive citizenship uh, in a creative society. The inclusive citizenship dealt with all of the barriers that stood between people's full participation in society and decision making and so on. And not seeing the person who didn't participate as in any way having attributes to stop them, but rather addressing the blockages that were there. So we should be expressing all of our laws positively. And then in a creative society, that was not just about speaking about the matters that would have been associated with previous parts of my life, for example, in arts or culture, my wife's life in theatre or whatever, not just the aesthetic things, but creative in everything we do. I'm always reminded of what may be one of the finest people, one of the greatest brains I've ever met, Mike Cooley, uh, who wrote Architecture B from Chum, once said, that his mother taught him how to make 45 kinds of bread. Mike Hooley has three doctorates, including one in creative design, the holder of the alternative Nobel Prize, and so forth. And he and his two friends were uh, Mike Brennan uh, from the Electoral Trade Union and Tom Murphy from the greatest user of the English language and theatre in my lifetime. All three went to the tech because they wanted to build an airplane. Uh, I think that this is the meaning of creativity. 
And then I said that beyond inclusive citizenship in a creative society, that it would create a kind of Irishness of which we might be proud, that it would move beyond acquisitiveness and narrow judging of people by the narrow criterion of what they were assumed to own, but rather what they were as persons, but how they saw their other citizens, and then that this would enable a real republic to be created. I have quite deliberately st stayed with that program, not just through the campaign, but through different speeches I'm making, and it's one of the reasons I was very glad to hear uh, what Daniel had to say about as people, uh, as, uh, as, as, as young people, listen to older people. I want to pay such tribute to those who have had, who those who are youth workers, those who are in the organisation, but very particularly to the volunteers for all that you have done. Um, I think that if I might say, and it's one of the great advantages I have to some extent, if you are at this stage of your life, I'm not doing sociological research now, but I'm president of Ireland, and I'm president of Ireland, and when I look back at those things that I read at different times. There is an enormous difficulty always in using phrases like old and young. Certainly it is true that very few young people aspire to be old, except the most conservative, but very many old people aspire to be young. <laughs> and uh, I think that this is perfectly natural. But one of the things that is the great gifts, I would think, of young people who are moving through the next decades in Ireland is that they are moving into a world of complete change. There will be entirely new models of relationship, of economy, of culture, of society, of relations between nature itself and the planet and responsibility, concepts of justice. It's all in a flux of change. And there's a real danger that those who may have, in fact, come out of old, collapsing, and not very life-giving forms of organization might, in fact, ever speak in an authoritarian way. It is one of the biggest problems in Ireland, is, in fact, it is one of the casualties of our independence to some extent, is how quickly we embraced an authoritarian version of bureaucracy, where, in fact, development became, through an organization or a person or the achievement of any goal, been learning the rules of how we did it before. All that is breaking up, I think, myself. One, I think it was Blaise Pascal, the French philosopher, who said, even if it was all working, which it is not, it is that reason is but just one drop in a notion of emotion. And it was interesting that the young man who introduced me used the word emotion. Emotions are important. And emotions are important in defining the ethical content of how we live together. The ethical content that is there in all those big words I used about inclusiveness and creativity and Irishness and so forth. And it is also so that sometimes when I've been asked to speak, I've been asked sometimes to speak about, for example, people will say it doesn't matter as long as you're inspirational. Well, people looked for inspiration from different places. And people looked for inspiration in, I think, when spirituality gave way to religion in codes. People looked for it in reason in the Enlightenment. It was only a matter of making everything reasonable. And then they looked for it as well in different places, in consciousness. The assumption that someone has a trick, or they can, in fact, release something in other people, the only thing, and Faroe is built around this, and I pay tribute to it, is that the only thing we can know, do is to assure people that you must come to know that the inspiration is in yourself. And the inspiration being in yourself means as well, the second fundamental element is that uh, uh, the hash is achieved in interaction with other people. There are lonely people in rural areas who will remember their first meeting, going for the first time, working up the courage to attend. And you might say nothing, and suddenly because there are voices all around you sharing experience, you speak, and then your life is changed forever. It is together, in interaction with each other, that we flower and develop. And that is so important to recognize that. And this is, I think, that the Ireland that is creative and full of energy 
is not endlessly recycling and repeating old failed bits and pieces of language that would do your head in, frankly, sometimes. <laughs> it is a matter of being able to say that you actually, li we don't just work to live, we, do, we, we, just don't, we don't live to work, we work to live. If I was to look back at all the hundreds of books that have been written about the Eastern philosophy, they all speak about being alive now. They all speak about being reflective. They all speak about not dying every day, but living every day. And in that sense, the idea that there are clubs that would enable people to empower and encourage, to hone abilities and attributes and so forth, is very important. I come to congratulate Feroiga not only on what it has achieved through all the clubs and meetings and the volunteers and the projects, but also through its partnership with somebody who I believe is a very fine sociologist and scholar, and that is Professor Pat Buck Dolan, the UNESCO Chair in Children, Youth and Civic Engagement. And I know from Professor Dolan's work that what he has in mind is this, is that younger people have been told for so long about how, in fact, they can be perfect adults just like the people talking to them. When, in fact, what is important is to be able to recognize what is new and what is emerging and what is creative and how, in fact, young people can be inspirational uh, themselves. And inspiration is important. I say this to all of the volunteers in thanking them. I think that Herder, the German philosopher, said, without inspiration, the best powers of the mind, mind remain dormant. And I think that it is, thinking is important. And that's why all what goes on in the different clubs should really and does embrace all of the modern issues that are taking place. Who could envisage, for example, there are, um, there are new and old problems. I think that, uh, I do repeat my point as well. One must always be very careful about emotions. The emotions of the sea within which reason is just a bubble. And I think therefore in responding, all of both the positives and negatives of our contemporary life come from emotions. The negative of emotion of racism, the appalling destructive thing of homophobia, which I really feel people should speak about so often. The idea that any young person would be driven to not just to lower self-esteem, exclusion, isolation, loneliness, but self-destruction itself is an appalling blight on a society. So we have to ask, therefore, about how racism gets going, how homophobia, homophobia does its destructive work, how isolation tears at a person's wanting to exist. How important every person is. These are important issues. They are not merely emotional issues. Reason is the tiny instrument within the vast machine of the emotions that is there. Professor Dolan will deal with that so much better than I ever could. And the challenges that will now face us in the coming decades are not just negatives. They're all very positives. Younger people, by and large, know more about the appropriate connection between science, technology, and the environment. They're probably very advanced in relation to ecological thinking. They actually continually make the point about the importance of the spiritual rather than any belief system based on fear. And when I attend the funerals of young people, sadly on occasion, when I look at the messages they send each other, they say things like, uh, you were always there for me. And in that message that they might say about a lost friend, they're really speaking about the ethical importance of friendship. And I've seen that again and again and again. And I have seen many people wither and shrink as people as they owned and possessed more, only thinking. And somebody is saying, did you hear how he has, he has just taken over this as well? The world is next. The fact of the matter is the ethics of friendship are terribly important. Aristotle said that the ethics of friendship are greater and make a greater demand than the ethics of justice, because you don't measure what you do in friendship. I pay tribute to everything that Farouga has done, be it in terms of what they're doing in addressing issues of immigration and youth suicide, 
and racism and the incredible issue which somebody must say what it has done by providing outlets, meetings and youth cafes and other activities that are addressing the appalling destruction of our society by alcohol abuse and by drugs. And I don't say that in any heavy sense except to say I see all of these youngsters as sometimes as young people in trouble. And in our approach to penology, this is another thing I think that will be a defining characteristic of the coming decades is that our societies in dealing with crime and deviance and punishment, and you mentioned my mention about normality and abnormality, the acceptance of difference as richness, because the society that is emerging in Ireland is a society that will have drawn from many streams. It will be a very rich tapestry, and it will be rich because it is different. And equally, in many cases, there is no such thing. A sociologist, there's no serious sociologist alive in the world who suggests that there is a life cycle of perfect happiness. The life cycle throws up moments of sadness, moments of great challenge, moments of great loss, for which it is necessary to achieve grief, to be able to go on to the illumination that follows all of these things. So we have to be able to tell people about the life as it might be, but not life as a kind of an endless, uh, an endless area of consumption or an endless area of a sort of pain-free existence. I do know that for Oiga, and I should congratulate you on your 60th anniversary, it has been a first in many different areas. The first organisation to provide general youth services in disadvantaged areas. I so congratulate you on that. Because remember the test always is, wouldn't it be easy to be setting something up where it is comfortable, but to be setting up where it is needed is a different challenge. And I think sometimes I know the difference, even in my own city in Galway, and I know the work of Faroiga and where it works. I think that enabling the Garda Shikana to roll out one of the first Garda Youth Diversion projects was a first of Faroiga's, as were some of the drug and alcohol prevention projects. And then the internationally proven one, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. I think that was very good, as is the Youth Entrepreneurship Programme. And I'm delighted that into the Youth Entrepreneurship Programme, and Pat Dolan, I think, is, is achieving this, is a notion of social entrepreneurship being side by side with commercial versions. Leadership programmes. I think the youth cafes are very interesting. I think maybe I'm not allowed to talk about legislation now or the disposal of day-to-day -day resources, but I would like to say is that by making the youth cafes possible and rich, society is making itself possible and rich. I think that the electing of people to the young people to the National Council of Faroiga is commitment to uh, the, uh, is an, an indication of a commitment to empowering young people. I think that it is very important that they that their needs be addressed and be addressed by themselves. I think too as well the distinction between those who are youth workers and those who are volunteers are quite different. Uh, but they are complementary. I think that, for example, a youth worker is a very, is a very, very, very sensitive kind of training. Uh, it is one that in it draws on all of the skills of listening and observing and judging, as well as the skills of imparting and so forth. It requires patience, endurance. I think often, very often, youth workers who are left to work on their own are under particular difficulties. My personal view is that people working in teams are better so that somebody who is having a bad time will be able to ride it out. But look at, in response, isn't it a wonderful achievement? And in, I think that there are five, the, the fact that your organisation reached the figures it did in terms of membership is just such testimony. I know that during the day you will be paying tribute to people from every decade. Tom Connery from Wexford in the 50s, Tom Cunningham from Cork from the 60s, Mayor Woman Margaret Henry from the 70s, Ger Deere from the 80s, Kean Egan from Westlife, who has one of your own, uh, and Sinead Ward from Roscommon, representing the first decade of the 21st century, and Maeve Tracy from Galway. You know where I began, and when I was speaking about active citizenship, I so much see that what you're doing is enabling people to come to understand the changes that are global, the changes that are European, the changes that are happening all around in Ireland, the changes that are happening even in one's own body. My one thing that I am certain of, 
as I said, and I'm free to say it, that I often see in the formal school system to some extent, is we have to accept education as something that includes all of the experiences within the school setting, but beyond it as well in parishes and in localities and so forth. In relations between people of different generations, we are very blessed in Ireland by not having any, any deep fissures between older people and younger people. I keep repeating it. In that campaign at which those meetings that I attended that Daniel referred to, no young person asked me anything at the cost of older people in Ireland, and no older person at any of the Fela Bialton meetings ever asked me for anything other than to say that they wished that there was an Ireland and an Irishness of which young people could be proud. We have to work on that, that intergenerational solidarity, and it is generous, and it is about the holistic well-being of young people with a very strong sense of belonging. I think that in other areas as well, I hope myself that I will be always, I am two last points I want to make. I will, as you know, I was, I'm pledged to holding a number of presidential seminars. I will be holding some presidential seminars and also some lectures uh, through the ORAS during mine at the ninth presidency because I am committed to a presidency of ideas. The government has its job to do, the Dole and Shannon have their job and local authorities. But sometimes there are themes that occur, like the ones I have been discussing, about the great empty loneliness that is destructive of a person's life, of isolation, of all these issues, for example, of belonging and so forth, which I think are appropriate to be discussed by a presidency. And I said that the very first one was to have been being young in Ireland, and I changed it because so many young people in Ireland were moving out of the country. So I'm going to, it's now called being young and Irish. And therefore, you are Irish wherever you are. And it is about bringing this Irishness, being part of the construction of the new Irishness in the republic we want, uh, they will be part of it. The second big seminar will be on ethics in every aspect of life, because I think it is incredibly important that we put this sense of belonging and inspiration in, into our lives and fill the vacuums that are there, not with meaningless glib phrases, because there's nothing. I, I went through my own youth listening to that kind of stuff about uh, 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 to just smile and the world will smile with you. It will, I'm sure, but the fact is you need a little more than that. So we'll be using our minds and our reason instead of all of this, as, uh, uh, all of these shallowness. The second then, the last thing then, is in relation to the lectures I run, which I hope will address significant themes. But you know what it is about, and, it is, and this is, I think, the most important thing, on a celebratory date like today. Let's bear banach ter gokro ta ta buncha makangri, agas guim gokro hagas banach ter ne haibe ne tovri esulia, a meher sula give santao kui. All that you have achieved has been wonderful, the people that you have been able to become involved, the self-worth you have encouraged, the benefit to community, that is magnificent. And there are no difficulties which challenge us beyond our capacities. But there are just wonderful, wonderful resources, inspiration that can be released within people themselves and within organisations when they think about it. And you are going the right way by getting, as it were, an engaged, reflective intellectual like Professor Dolan to work with you. But very importantly, I pay tribute to the youth workers who do the work every day. I pay tribute to the young people who turn up. And I pay tribute to the young people particularly who care for each other. And also then as well for the volunteers, day after day, week after week. So thank you for inviting me to come along and speak to you. And it has been a pleasure to do that and indeed to wish you well for all the further decades to come. Thank you very much. <laughs>